The Shadow Brexit Secretary joins me now. Do you accept that you have been very unclear up to now about where you want to end up? No, we've been very clear. We've said that we want a partnership that retains the benefits of the single market and the customs union. It's and the events of this week can, can prove I, that we're right about that. Can I, can I explain to you why I think that you, you have not been clear? You've had your deputy, uh, Tom, deputy leader, Tom Watson, has said that we could stay inside the single market, perhaps in perpetuity. John McDonnell had said that would not be respecting the views of the single market. And you yourself have said this week that you have not been sufficiently clear on the point of the single market. My problem is I always get very technical um, and uh, legal please. about this and I'm not going to do that. Um, so let me just be clear. I mean, what are the benefits of the single market and the customs yeah. union? They are, they are no, no tariffs and they are alignment of, of uh, regulations and standards. And that means that for goods and services we can trade successfully in the future. That's what we want. That's what we mean by the benefits. Okay. Um, and and, 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 and so, to so some extent, so can, can, the model doesn't matter. It's what, the, what are the outcomes. Can I try and ventriloquise for you? What you want is you, you accept that you can't stay inside the single market, as Ian Blackford has just asked, because of the referendum result. But you want a new treaty which gives you as many of the benefits of the single market and the customs union as can be negotiated. Well, the way we've put is that it, true? it well, the way we've put it is that we would start with viable options, staying in a customs union uh, and a, a single market variant, which means full participation in the single market. So it's a bit more than that. We want the full benefits and we're clear about what the starting options would be. Right. But the, the developments this week um, show that we're right uh, in our approach because one of the reasons we've advocated that course is because it's the only way to achieve no hard border in Northern Ireland. It's a point I put to so David Davis in the House of Commons on Tuesday. You can't sweep the customs union and the single market off the table with, uh, on the one hand and also say you don't want a hard border in Northern Ireland and that is exactly um, the conclusion really of the negotiations this okay, week. Okay well let's talk a little bit about I want to come on to your position in a second yeah. but this hard border question um, we have this new word full convergence yes. of, of regulations between the EU on the one hand and the entire UK on the other yes. but we're told this morning we're told this morning that, that w that's not legally meaningful and that actually it may not mean much in the, in, in the end. Well, uh, the document that was released uh, on Friday commits to no hard border, meaning no infrastructure uh, and no related checks um, or controls. That's an absolutely clear commitment. There's an equally commitment. Just, just let me finish this if you don't it's mind. It's a fallback but, but position. No, I'll, no. I'll come to that. Uh, there's there's, there's, there's an, a, a commitment to the North-South cooperation uh, which is across a whole range of areas and what's written into the document is that these are commitments come what may in all circumstances whether agreement but the document or also says no customs <laughs> union and no single well and, and you push me on that's the fallback position so let me deal with that I am um, having read and reread the small print here including the EU Commission's own assessment I am clear that the fallback in the first position in fact will collapse into one, which is alignment. And I'll tell you why I say that. I've been saying uh, over and over again... So you, you think you, this is the real deal? This is the real deal. You, you can't have no hard border if you don't have alignment. Uh, and, and you're and saying that because the European Commission is also saying the, the, it? The European Commission on Friday issued their own document, which is their own assessment of the agreement that was released on Friday. Now, remember, they are on the other side of the negotiating table. And they say they did a mapping exercise of the north-south... Uh, agree cooperation agreements and they were clear that the biggest single risk is divergence to those north-south agreements because they're based on EU law and policy and then they want, went on to say what the UK have said is that their aim is to solve this with a EU-UK agreement the number one option that David Davis will talk about in just a minute and then this is what the EU say about this this intention seemed hard to reconcile with the United Kingdom's communicated decision to leave the internal market and the customs union. They, so yeah. nine months in... But with respect, they would say that, Well, they? they're on the other side of the table, yeah. and they're saying, we do not see how yeah. option one isn't essentially the same as option three. These will collapse okay. into... A, and that is why you're seeing the reaction that you're seeing so, this so morning you, so from, you really from those on the right of the Tory party, because okay. they realise that this collapses into to, to one way forward, which is... Uh, alignment and convergence. Okay. So for a lot of people this is con confusing, but let me be very clear. You really think that the agreement that Theresa May struck this week means that Britain will in perpetuity stay very, very close to the single market and the customs union? Yes, uh, and I think that's the right thing, and I think we should hold her okay. uh, to that because 
Uh, that goes to the heart of the question, what sort of Britain do we want to be? Do well, we see Europe as our major trading partner in the okay. future, or do we want to rip ourselves apart from that? That's exactly where I want to get you and your own position. So you want a new treaty giving us the full access and benefits to the single market and the customs union. Yeah, it'll have to and be a new and, treaty. And you have to. said it's a bit like a Norway-style treaty for the 21st century. Yes. Exactly. Now, the two things that the EU has made it absolutely clear that involves is, one, you have to carry on paying some money in. Would you accept that? Uh, Norway pays money in. Um, they do yeah. it actually on a voluntary basis, not to the, okay. to the budget. But there may be... Would you accept it? There though? may have to be payments that have to, to be negotiated. So, so you could negotiate payments in, in that thing. But the other thing, as you know, is the four freedoms. The four freedoms. Now, you have said again and again that um, freedom of movement is off the table yeah. it's after we leave, we've left, and all the rest of it. Can I ask you a different question, a subtly different question? Would maximal cross-channel uh, migration in both directions be part of that negotiation or not? Well, I mean, whatever the rules are will have to be negotiated. You're absolutely right to push me on this because well, I'm um, push I've, you again, I, I, I've said uh, uh, freedom of movement um, can't stay the same. The status quo is not an option. That means it's got to be negotiated and you and others push back okay. against me and say you can't have the benefits of the single market and the customer union if you don't we also do. accept freedom. Yeah. Well, now, as a result of Friday, we've got the EU and the UK agreeing to an approach which says we must retain alignment if we're to solve the, uh, the, 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 the position in Northern Ireland. In other words... So that means people moving across those borders in both directions? Just, I mean, just, just let me make this point, because, it, you know, what, what's said against me every time I put this argument up is, you can't have that, uh, it's fantasy, um, and therefore, you know, you've got to give up on the benefits of the single market and the customer union. What's clear from Friday is that the benefits of the single market and the customer union are integral to Northern Ireland. And what's really I important just, I, is that... I just need to want to say one more time on this question of <laughs> migration, people moving back and yes. forth between the EU and the UK. It's not a kind of abstruse matter, it's about real people yes. watching this programme. Would Labour, in that treaty, negotiate a system whereby people living in the EU could come and work here freely and vice versa? Yes well, or no? Well, that would have please. to be negotiated, but the end of free movement doesn't what's mean, your in, what's your doesn't mean no on? movement. Of course we would want people to come okay. from the EU to work here. We'd want people who are here to go and work in the EU. The basis of that would have to be negotiated. But All right, easy movement if not free. Yes, of course. Right, OK, that, that's really interesting. And when it comes to the regulations, can I be absolutely clear that after we have left the EU, under your negotiation, we would still be mapping, copying and pasting or whatever, sticking very close to EU uh, regulations when it comes to, you know, carrots, car engines, vacuum yeah. cleaners, whatever it might be. Yeah, I mean, what underpins uh, access and the benefits of the single market customers union is a level playing field that everybody applies the same sure. regulations and standards. So if you want those benefits, you've got to stay on the same level playing field. Now, the Labour Party doesn't have a problem so, so, with so, that. So we do not want to deregulate. We don't want to cut so the away to my workplace question is basically rights, yes. environmental rights. Yes, we are very okay. comfortable with staying and, on and, a level playing field. In the future, we don't have a vote on these things, but they change the vacuum cleaner regulations in a few <laughs> years' time, and we change with them, well, even though we don't have a vote. Yes? Yes. Okay, because, so... Just, just let me explain. If well, you're making vacuum cleaners in this country and you're selling to Europe, you are going to have to change mm -hmm. with those, because otherwise you can't sell into that market. We've got a choice uh, when we leave uh, about whether we stay aligned or not. It doesn't mean okay. we've got to exercise that choice in a way that makes it more difficult for us to change. We've got a choice and we can okay, choose to stay aligned. Let's rehearse where we've got to. After your negotiation with the EU, we carry on paying money in, we have very easy movement of people back and forward, so those people who voted to take our money back, those people who voted to cut my immigration will not be happy, and we are going to copy and paste and follow the EU regulations, even though we don't have a vote. That is, by any standards, the worst of all worlds. You have backed yourself into a very unpleasant corner. Well, uh, I really don't see how it's the worst of all worlds to be able to continue to trade successfully in Europe, I really don't see how it's the worst, the worst of all worlds to have a solution that works in Ireland. 3,600 people or so were killed, murdered, over 30 years in Northern Ireland. It's a very good book published uh, this year. Which we're is, getting wildly uh, off subject re remember here. Remember These Dead. I mean, these, these are serious choices about the future of, of course Britain. they are. And having no hard border and being able to trade successfully uh, with Europe in the future is a choice that we're entitled to okay. make. We, we've got a choice. We're, get, we we're, we're, going to take, we're, going to, we're going to take their regulations without a vote. We're going to carry on with a big migration back and forward. And we're going to pay...
pay money for the privilege. That has been described as well, being a vassal state of the EU. How we negotiate that agreement with the EU is a matter still for negotiation. It doesn't mean it's cut and paste. But we do, okay. have, a, we do have a choice. Do we want to stay aligned so that we can trade successfully, or do we want to tear apart? Um, and I say we should stay aligned. Okay. We're talking about what sort of Britain we're going to be and what the next 40 or 50 years might look like. Um, and I don't think anybody voted to make it harder to trade with Europe. But nonetheless, you're in a position which your own colleague, Barry Gardner, has described as being a vassal state. And that is going to be Labour's offer to the voters of the next election. I think the, um, position Labour that, for a vassal state. I think the position that Barry Gardner laid out was one at the beginning, beginning of uh, last summer. We then but did it's a, where you've ended we, up. We, we, did a huge, we did a huge amount of work over the mm. summer, as you know, mm. um, developing our policy. We came out very mm. clearly saying transitional arrangements are going to be needed and on the same terms as now. Um, and that we should have as viable options on the table, staying okay. in a customs union and a variant of the single market. And, and every Labour spokesperson mm. since then All right. um, ha, ha, has said the same thing. So I, I appreciate that, you know, if you go I, back, you can find minor differences. But really, since the summer, I it's been not, a unified voice okay. from Labour. I am not, unfortunately, a mind reader. So I, can't, I can't do that. But I suspect that you would actually like to stay in the single market and the customs union, and you know that would be the, the best available option to us right now, because we they would then have votes and so forth. Now, um, can I just ask you, would it not be more honest, would it not be more straightforward, and it, would it not kind of vivify and enthuse many of your own supporters if you were just able to say, do you know what, yes, let's get rid of all the obfuscation, let's get rid of all the kind of weasel words, I'd like to stay inside the single market and the customs union. Well, Andrew, I've said we want the benefits of both, and I've said that the viable options there are staying in uh, a customs unit or a variant of the single market. And I say variant, I don't, I don't want to get technical because it doesn't help it's me. It's not when exactly I do. the same but thing. You okay. would, you, everybody knows that you would have to sign a new agreement. You can't stay in the, exactly the same agreement you're in. You'd need a new okay. agreement. There's got to be a variant of what we've got. But do we want full participation in the single market? Yes, we do. Do we want the benefits of the customs union? Yes, we do. S do we need to so negotiate? Big choices that. ahead. Yes, we do. Because that's the okay. Britain that we want to live in. Very big choices ahead. Jeremy Corbyn has said that the idea of a second referendum is still on the table. Is it? Well, uh, at the moment, um, uh, I think it's absolutely clear that we've got to get through this phase of the negotiation. We've got to get through the Article 50 uh, agreement. Now, um, we've never called uh, for a second referendum. We are focusing he, on what the new agreement needs to look like. Your leader said that you haven't taken a decision on it, which means that you might call for a second referendum, yes or no? Well, we haven't called for a, a second referendum. I'm asking about the future, though. Well, we haven't called for a second referendum. Things are moving so fast, uh, okay. it's hard to know what's going to come next, but we are not calling for it. They certainly have. Sir Keir Starmer, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Now, Molly.